On today's Man of the Eights, we can finally start now that Richard showed up. It's a daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet of the Eight movies, one minute at a time. I'm Todd. That was Sean that you heard kicking Richard in the proverbial balls. Hail. And I it guess takes that... a, it takes a little time to get this pretty. I'm just saying, you know, I just, I just, <laughs> you don't roll out of bed like that. And I don't roll out of bed like this. No, <laughs> not at this age anymore. Nah. Not at all. <laughs> so we are we are in the midst of trying to logistically also, and I'm going to say this because Zoom's not listening. We're, we use Zoom for this, and we're going to try and full Zoom. So I only throw that out because Zoom has a time limit and wants to charge you money, and I'm not willing to pay that money. So. <sighs> Now, if at the you, end know, you say now you say that you say that, but you understand that all of these apps and microphones are listening. <laughs> they hear right? That's why when you mention something about needing car insurance, all of a sudden sort of getting ads for car insurance. If you just say it out loud, I'm just warning you right now. Well, luckily the Zoom only place that well, that is true. Zoom might be listening, but they're not going to be listening. I, people say disparaging things about Zoom all the time. So hi Zoom, thank you so much. Yeah. We love you, and I understand the reason why you need to make money. I just don't want to give it to you. Anyway, right. here we are, minute 61. Sean, tell us what's going on. All right. Uh, we are going to start. Minute 61, the Caesar announcing over the PA, all keepers and handlers, attention, and ends with apes facing off against a flamethrower. All right, let's take a listen to minute 61 of Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. All keepers and handlers, attention. Attention. All keepers and handlers. There's $50,000 worth of apes in jeopardy. Get them out of here. As of minute 61, we have a courtyard's worth of gorillas, chimpanzees, orangutans, imported apes, Caesar, some lost apes in the, um, and we probably lost some apes in the revolution. We got a plant's worth of humans, no Armando, and uh, probably lots of guards are dead in ape management now. So are we to assume that this is the only place that, in this world, I, you know, it's the only place that the revolution is going on? Is it ape management or have other tangents of ape revolution begun elsewhere? Uh, as far as I know, it's on, only this city because they haven't given us anything about the outside world and how the apes are acting there. And, you know, they're, they've been having – they have to quell an uprising. You know, they, they were talking about people protesting in the beginning of the movie, but they never address the rest of the, the world out there. It's just this one city. So I'm assuming that it's just happening here right now. I, I hated to ask such a nebulous kind of question about a movie you don't have any way to really answer. But while I was watching, I thought, you know, that would be interesting if there were other cities out there. There were ape-heavy cities and if they were also well, in the midst of a revolution. So, 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 ape, go, so well, did, I'm going to just say, <laughs> I'm just gonna say real quick, in <laughs> ape management, all they had to do is put – uh, monitors with different city names above it. Tokyo, you know, Beijing. Yeah. 
True. But let's 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 uh, pull back. So we had the the minutes before we had Caesar marching with a, the group of apes from the ape washroom or whatever that little basement was where they're kind of gathering, and they're not going into the city per se. They're not. They're going specifically to ape management. So they're trying to take down what? Are they trying to take down the, the torture system? The, the, well, why wouldn't they go to the command center then? Uh, I guess because you're going – well, he has to free He has those, to free all those. the apes that are in there, yeah. So basically we're, what we're saying is that he's gone to ape management to stop the torture of the apes or has he gone to ape management to create his own army? I think, I think both. Why, why can't it be both? Right. So that's why that's why this idea of, of other things happening out of the cities, I don't know that necessarily would be relevant at this particular point because he has to build, expand his army. And I think that's what, what we're seeing that's a good here point. is he's, he's, he's letting out this stuff. Otherwise, they'd just be in the plaza causing chaos right now. Well, and plus we've also seen, we've seen nothing to say that Caesar's picked up the phone to call other apes and say, hey, you got to – we're doing this together. It's a big jailbreak, and they're going to play Thin Lizzy's jailbreak, and they're all going to bust out. Right. So we but don't was, have that information, but it just kind of hit me like, oh, wouldn't that be kind of cool if this was even a bigger kind of thing? So when he, Caesar says the line over the PA system, we have $50,000 worth of apes in jeopardy. Get them out of here alive. What do you think he was – I mean, I, honestly, I had to read the script to follow what this meant. Did, what, what does I, this mean to you? I Well, I thought that was him trying to lure more guards in to be attacked. Okay. I I buy that. that I got so stuck on Jesus. His inflation so out of control that when this <laughs> came out that $50,000 worth of apes was considered a lot because now – if that was made, each ape might be worth fifty thousand dollars. Right, right. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> that's a small. That's a small amount. Yeah, but that's a that's so, a good point. You know, why is he saying that? And I, I think it's right. Maybe he's trying to lure more humans in so that he can do it. But at the same time, isn't a more exact plan the one where you don't lure them in and you overpower small numbers and make your army bigger so you can then attack? It, it's a very odd choice. And, and there's actually uh, what Dane wants in the script to happen, uh, or at least what, what the intention of the, what's happening over the PA system, what Dane wants, is not what's visually shown. So they're, they're, they conflict with each other a little bit. The idea behind we have $50,000 worth of apes in jeopardy, get them out of here alive, is that he's trying to get the keeplers and handlers to unlock the cages to let the apes out. Okay. But uh, we don't actually get any of that visual. What we do is we see Caesar kind of press control buttons – and these invisible doors, those invisible like laser Light, doors, yeah, the lights yeah. turn off, yeah, lights turn off, and you see apes just pour out of the cells. So the two, the, the the visual and the audio kind of conflict with with what Dave wanted in the script. The the, the keepers, the jail keepers, were supposed to let them out. We speak. Uh, at- you were saying earlier, Todd, about the money. I did a, a search, and uh, fifty thousand dollars adjusted for inflation is just shy of three hundred thousand dollars. So okay, that's that's not worth very low risking number. my life. Yeah. Um, so back to Richard's point of what was originally called for and what was delivered. I, we, we speak at nauseum about how quickly this film was shot, what they're thinking. And, you know, I, I think when you're pressed into those creative situations, you begin to bridge gaps in your head and think the audience will go with it. And I think when you watch this as a whole, you don't stop down and say, what, what are they doing? It just seems like that odd. He's using, there are fifty thousand dollars worth of apes. First off, where does Caesar get that information? If he's going to know what yeah. the apes are worth, we need to hear something where he's learned that. But that's a, beside the point. But Dane's request in the script makes a lot more sense. If it's to turn those things off and the apes get out, and we see that, that makes sense. Like there's a, like there's another control situation where where security is letting apes out through the control right. panel, the keys or something, then, then the statement makes sense because Caesar's not talking to the apes that, that we see that are hearing this. He's talking to other people outside. We don't see that outside. We just see the chaos in the room itself. And you're going for the easy thing, which is get the apes out of the cage and then have chaos. And I, it works. The chaos works beautifully. Um, you could still – go with Danes, which is open the, the gates and let the apes out. And suddenly the apes greatly, you have a shot where they greatly outnumber the guards 
and it would imply the same thing. And it would, instead of being chaos, it would just be ominous that they're so big. And you've seen things like that before in, in revolts where the people who want to revolt greatly outweigh their oppressors. So I kind of, I kind of long for what Dane wanted. Yeah. The, 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 what, what's, what's interesting about this is this particular minute is it's kind of still a continuation of the minute before we just now see the, the apes pouring out of the jail cells but there's still the choreography of of the apes fighting the security forces or the, the the guards as they kind of come out. But it's mostly apes just kind of pouring out of cells. One of the things that I kind of appreciated in the shot about 21 seconds in, uh, Caesar is at the control center control panel after just just me giving that speech, and he's kind of sitting there for a second, uh, like he's thinking. It's just a really random shot, and you see kind of stuff going on behind him, and one of the apes behind him kind of bumps him and it kind of pushes him forward. Mm-hmm. And then they bring it back and they cut back outside the, the melee. And I just thought that was a really unnecessary but kind of a cool choice to kind of see him kind of in it a little bit without having him in the direct fight. He's actually being affected by it by bumping into him. Right. Yeah, I had, so, I had, so, had a note there saying, is Caesar enjoying this or just tolerating it? <laughs> well, oh, and then we get 25 seconds, we get guard with whip. Does, does, to do, just out of curiosity, and then, oh, just out of curiosity, does that really work? Like, like two seconds later, he, the, the whip comes up and lashes around an ape's throat and he pulls against the ape. Can you really do that with the whip? Can you lash somebody's throat around, and like, whip it around them and, like, yank on it? I, I, well, found, if you, all, I found all whip guy. I, I, I noted him as whip guy. There was a lot of you know, questions like that. And also, it's kind of odd that he's keeping them all at bay, at bay with a simple whip while all the other humans are being overwhelmed and nobody's tackling his ass. Yeah, coming up from behind. Yeah. I, I want but, a whip. Uh, Apparently, you, whips will help me stave off the ape apocalypse. Uh, but, I mean, you know, the, the, the use of the whip. As it relates to slavery, was relevant you know, uh, without question. That, it, it, it's that a great use. Good. It's a it's a wonderful thing to have there. If you're not worried about hurting somebody, yeah, you could whip somebody and have it wrap around them and and pull them down. In this case, if you look, he whips very softly and it goes around the ape's neck, and then they cut, and then it's a little bit tighter, and the ape is jumping down. Well, so it's not actually one shot where he whips him and pulls him down. It's actually two shots. And that first shot is the one where, to me, you can really notice, you know, when you when you do a lot of stuff like this, Indiana Jones is the, the exception. They use a real leather bull whip and most of its stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. But in this, it's a, cloth, or whatever. it's a cloth whip. And you mm-hmm. it, the, the whip almost like kind of floats in the air. And it's like, yeah, oh. You can see how he takes it very softly and it's like <laughs> gently wrapped around his neck. Yeah. And then the next shot, it's a little tighter and he's jumping now. The with all of the questions of why didn't they do what Dane called for, oh. there are still tons of great angles, tons of wonderful handheld swishing yeah. cameras that that make you a part of the chaos. Chaos is an amazing thing in film oh. when it works, and I think by and large it works. There are just a lot of questions when it comes to, you know, the attack on the humans because of things like that. And there's there's something later on the. In fact, I think it isn't in this minute when the, the person fires the gun. Yeah, it yeah. is in this minute. Okay, if you, you know, if, I was going to say forty-five seconds in when when that ape they're at the top of the stairs and he jumps on that one guard and they like somersault backwards down the steps. I was like, holy fuck, that hurts. Yeah, <laughs> that, 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 that legitimately hurt me when he rolled down backwards. When the two of them rolled down, tumbled down backwards on that sim, like that ha- that. Please tell me that was a soft step because that that looks terrible. You you know they, they might rehearsed have been padding on them. Yeah, they rehearsed the hell out of it, but it does look incredibly painful. Um, the gun. Here's here's my question: If I'm in this moment and I'm terrified, and I have a gun that I think that revolver probably holds six shots, why am I only tossing off one shot? Yeah, and why and am I tossing off one shot to somebody all the way up at the top of yeah. the steps as opposed to down at the bottom? He he here. real purposely takes his gun. Bang, and that's it. You know, I want to hear bang, ba bang, 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 bang. You know, just give me that. Well, he's, only, he's only got maybe he's a um, deputy Fife, and he's only got Barney Fife, and he's only got one bullet. <laughs> maybe well, so. I, I had what I one of the things I went back and kind of replayed a little bit of the scene is that this forty eight seconds in is when we get the gunshot with the officer kind of in the what the left center screen aiming up to the uh, right and shooting an ape at the top of the steps. Now, it may have been an, uh, the um, 
what do you call the audio editor? What do you, what's that called? Yeah, audio editor can be done. Audio